I'm working on a fantasy world. My nod to being unique are the elves who all wear masks, regardless of gender. Why? I think it's cool. But I can't think of why they'd be wearing masks. Help. The problem with it being a cultural thing is that the masks are intended to be a racial trait. A race having the same culture all over the world, despite geographical separation, surroundings, or history is not only lazy writing, it is downright bad writing. There needs to be a reason the entire race does it, like a curse from God, or this. I have travelled across the world studying different people and cultures, and everywhere I went, every civilization of elves wore masks. Many of the different cultures have different beliefs and explanations for wearing them, but I believe I have found the core truth. There are millions of different combinations of human facial features. A human could go their entire lives without seeing another person that looked the same as them. That is true of every other race, orc, halfling, dwarf or gnome. Those the elves sometimes refer to as the unmasked, but not elves. Those who have seen the face of an elf beneath the mask know that they are a uniquely beautiful race. Their faces are perfectly fair, proportional and symmetrical in every way, but that horribly limits the different combinations of facial features. This is compounded by the incredibly long lifespan of elves. Imagine if the first girl you kissed bore the same face as your grandmother, who looks the same as your daughter. Elves wear masks because their uniquely beautiful faces are not, in fact, unique. Excerpt from Unmasking Elvish Society, a study of elf culture, by celebrated anthropologist Nativa Godgrist. Different elvish cultures adopt different customs regarding masks. Some have a strict case system enforced by the mask. Many impart symbols on the mask, displaying information about the wear. Their title, role, gender, and even their history can be displayed on a mask. One culture went the other way. The higher up in society an elf was, the simpler and more plain their mask was. Their leader's mask was completely devoid in detail. Some tribes of feral elves incorporated animal aspects into their masks. Warriors of those tribes wore truly fearsome masks when fighting, prompting rumours of monsters that never truly were. Almost all elvish cultures have a naming ceremony, imparting simple cloth masks onto their young. I continue to be amazed at the complexity as I explore the varying customs surrounding the masks of elves. Excerpt from Unmasking Elvish Society, a study of elf culture, by celebrated anthropologist Nativa Godgrist. I came to your revelation this morning. As I have been staying with this particular tribe of elves, they loaned me a plain mask bearing the simple mark, guest, although I suspect there is another connotation to it. This suspicion came from the way many elves who seen me seemed to chuckle and do their common head tilt and nod, that is the elvish smile. I imagined the secondary meaning of the mask is something akin to one who cannot manage to take care of this mask. The only other mask like it I have seen was an ill-fitting one worn by a rather sullen elf child walking alone through the village. Perhaps the child's own mask was lost or damaged. As I write this, I realise I have not once seen an elf wearing a damaged or worn out mask. Whether this is because of continual keep up or multiple masks, the observation is worth noting. On to the revelation. Anyone who has met a number of elves can tell you that many, but not all, have a sort of arrogance to them. I well believe that. Oh yeah. They carry themselves with a form of disapproving stiffness at all times, and at other times it seems more of a dismissive casual disregard. As I wore my mask and lived among them, this apparent arrogance dropped away and I find them to be very warm and inviting people. It occurred to me that covering one's face with a mask to an elf is like covering one's genitals to a human. Imagine a drunken light propped up in the entrance of a tavern, waving his parts at passing women. Now imagine your reaction to that drunken light. Would you not exhibit the same disapproving stiffness or casually dismiss them as a fool? Excerpt from Unmasking Elvish Society, a study of elf culture, by celebrated anthropologist Nativa Godgrist. After much coaching from a matron and a great deal of support from a group of children, I fashioned my own mask today. It is a simple, stretched, leather mask with a typical cloth insert, but it fits quite well and I am proud of my work. I was considering marking my mask with the guest symbol, 
similar to the one that was loaned to me, but the matron stopped me. I did not want to mark it with anything presumptuous, but at the same time wanted to feel included. In the end, we decided on a plain mask adorned with a symbol that means the visitor. Excerpt from Unmasking Elvish Society, a study of elf culture, by celebrated anthropologist Nativa Godgrist. Today I saw them in battle. Two ogres had wandered into their territory, although I would be hard pressed to tell you the boundaries. I held back in the trees while the patrol approached. A single elf, the squad leader, approached the two ogres while the others spread out into the forest. I could not hear what he had said to them, but one ogre responded faster than I thought anything that big could move. A massive hand gripped the elf by the shoulders with a sickening snapping sound as a dozen arrows appeared in the bodies of both ogres. The second ogre turned to charge towards a nearby cluster of trees and was felled by an arrow to the eye. The first ogre raised its massive fist up to bring down upon the elf gripped limply in its other hand. Arrows peppered the ogre's hide as a horrible, wheezing, guttering roar tore from the elf squad leader. The fearless mask elf brought up their sword and viciously stabbed the underside of the beast's head over and over again as the roar continued. The two collapsed upon the forest floor and when I saw the bodies, the ogre's stinking corpse had been mutilated by the sword strikes. And despite the obvious fact that the elvish warrior had died from the wounds, in fact half of their torso had been broken, I could not bring myself to approach the fallen warrior. The masked warrior had felled a mightier foe after receiving a mortal wound. I must admit that I feared there might be a true element of death weaving into those masks. Even as the blood that flowed out from beneath the mask grew cold, the eyes of the elvish death mask watched the forest and I was afraid. Excerpt from Unmasking Elvish Society, a study of elf culture by celebrated anthropologist Nativa Godgrist. Playing half-orc monk, decided to play something beyond weeaboo. I'm a master of martial arts. Spend 100 GP on inlaid masks with intricate tribal designs sewn onto the side with a fin. Become Lost Tiburon, the shark of the land, masked wrestler. Take feats revolving around grappling. Grapple everything. Everything. Every fucking thing. Including, but not limited to, a bear. Final part of campaign. Oh shit, dragon. Dragon acts like a faggot. Ducking into water and popping up to use breath weapon. Fuck that. I'm charging his ass. Brother. Playing warforged fighter. Assists my mighty leap into the air. Where I pose in midair. Shouting about the honour of the mask. Tackle a fucking dragon. Deal unarmed damage. Latch on. Take deep breath in preparation for underwater struggle. Dragon goes up. Forgot they can actually fly. DM gives me option to let go before he goes up. Fuck that. I'm still wrestling. 200 feet in the air, still wrestling a dragon and dealing unarmed damage. Dragon actually starts hurting me. Have to come up with a plan. Brilliance strikes me. I roll the pin. Entire table is silent. I roll the pin his wings behind his back. So he can't fly anymore. Entire table is leaning over so I can make my roll of destiny. Natural fucking 20. I pin the dragon's wings. Sending it and me hurling into the ground. I have six seconds to make my final statement. I am lost Tiburon. And I am a lucha. Dragon's neck snaps on impact. Through sheer luck or GM fate. Possibly both. I survive with minus 4 HP. Clerk puts me back at 1. Picks me up, holding one arm into the air. My brother immediately bangs his shield twice, making a bell noise. Party's bard slash diplomancer. And the winner is... Lost Tiburon! High fives all round. And that was the story of how I made it to level 4. See, honestly, there's something about D&D elves I just can't stand, but I love, I absolutely love... Eldar in 40k and I love fucking Lord of the Rings elves you know but see elves in general fantasy and stuff I just can't stand them I'm really not a fan of them but I put it like this I'm a dark Eldar player so you know I'm a big fan of me elves but I don't know there's something about them I have a love-hate relationship with them almost but look guys as always 
you tell us what you think of elves down below. I, I see a lot of elf heat, and after the last one, I thought, you know what, let's do another elf video. You know, um, I just kind of feel on it, so fuck it, you know, we kind of went for it. But, like, um, let us know what you think down below. Remember to subscribe, all that other good stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.